We like to be flexible in this church. We like to try new things. And you know what? New things sometimes really work. Sometimes they don't work. But we're believing that this is going to work. So we have a, we have, it's interesting everybody's on this side. So this is Morgan's side. So Darren and I are actually, come on up here, Morgan. We're going on holidays uh, for August, and Morgan is going to be running communion and running the church services. And he had a request to do those little communion cups that have the wafer on top. Peel one, wafer eat. Peel two, juice. That is your instruction, okay? I know that you guys can do it. And if you just feel a little too freaked out, then come on over to this side, and we're going to have the old way with the juice in the glass. So it's not a competition, but we want, we, want to, we want to do that, right? Yeah, amen. So with that, we're going to move right into um, communion. Are you? Yeah, yeah, you're. Okay. All right. yeah. I've just sent an usher to go back and get my glasses so that I can actually see. Very good. So, same rules apply. No pushing, no shoving, no elbowing, nothing like that. We'll do this in an orderly fashion, starting from the front. You come up through here. You grab this thing. We bless you. You go back to your seat, around the side, safely to your seat, and then we'll all take communion together. All right, let's do it. That's better. That's what it says. Thank you, Lord. I can hear that too. Hey, you guys getting ahead of yourselves here. It's not a game, you know. Wow. What's wrong with you people? I do believe you had some fun with your boys, with all your disciples and the ladies as well, because you're awesome like that. You totally do. Lord, I'm just so reminded that you said with great passion, with your heart, you desired to be with everyone before you went and were ascended into heaven, because you said you don't get to do it again. But you told us to do this until you come, until your return. Lord, we actually don't know when that is. Many of us believe it's pretty close, everything that's happening. But God, I'm just reminded that so much more as the day approaches, should we be together, hanging out together, loving together, and doing what you've called us to do. Lord, you are that manna. I think one of the most intimate times 
that I, I did communion was when we went to Israel. And uh, I didn't know that I was the one who was going to be doing it. And we were, we were in the garden, which was awesome. We, we had went to a whole bunch of places in Israel, and you got to see all the sites, and you got to see all the, uh, the protocol and some of the religiosity of it, actually quite a bit. But then when we got to the garden, it was completely different because it was run by, by spirit-filled believers, and they just loved Jesus. So we went to go do the communion, and the guy there said, well, actually, you're going to do it. Well, I don't have my Bible. I don't have all my stuff. I don't. No, no, no. It's from the heart. Ah, okay. Jesus. You make all things intimate. Lord, you're the bread, that manna. It's you that came from heaven. I just remember, Lord, how intimate it was there. And I just think what it must have been like with you and the disciples. You took the bread and you broke it. And you said, here, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Lord, thank you for what you've done for us. Even this morning, remembering you and your body that was broken. Lord, we take this bread. Let's take this cracker together. <laughs> okay, that's one point for this side. You guys are noisy over there. Let's hold the cup together. Jesus, that blood that you shed on that cross that saved us from ourselves, from wickedness, from sin, saved us from death, even promises us eternal life that the second death will not harm your kids but even does so much more than that while we are here, promises us, covenant promises that you've given to us, promises the blessings of Abraham, health, unity, being in the body, being healed, being redeemed, being set free and delivered, having a future, a promise and hope. Lord, that blood that it speaks such great things, promises that are so great that as a reminder that we can come near to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So Holy Spirit, thank you this morning for that beautiful, intimate reminder that the veil is torn, that you've made a way for us, that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us of all sin and unrighteousness and brought us face to face with the living God without terror. Jesus, we take this today, Lord, um, uh, reminded of what you've done, but so much more, God, so much more reminded of your promises. Let's take the cup today. to the end of the aisle. That's awesome. So we're just going to pause because we actually don't know what's in those and we just want to see what's going to happen. <laughs> been praying for healing this morning and the people would be raised again. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're okay. I better put my glasses on. <laughs> That's so funny. You know it's okay to laugh, right? 
God's so good. Amen. Amen. July 31st it is. Wow. So we are um, on air. We want to welcome our Facebook Live people. If you have a Facebook app in the church, if you could just open it up right now and just share. Thanks, Rach. Yeah, that's better. If you could just share it, we call it sharing the gospel. And we like to do that. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. Sharing the gospel has never been so easy. Amen. So we have, uh, Darren and I are taking some time off on holidays. I hope you guys have had some time to have holidays and enjoy summer. And we are taking time off in August. And I had mentioned that Morgan will be uh, emceeing the services. And we have a good lineup of speakers, which is quite amazing. But we're not going to have any live stream. So our online people, we're sorry, but come to church. We're not going to have it on August, but you'll still have the pod points. So for our Japanese audience, konnichiwa. I need to learn more Japanese, I think, but uh, it's just the, uh, the pod point podcast will be on, but I think it gets loaded on Mondays. We have uh, August 13th, we're going to do another car show at the Vero Welsh parking lot. And I think I've sent out most to people who already said that they could volunteer. We have t-shirts that we're going to sell next Sunday. Um, so if you're volunteering, we have black t-shirts and blue t-shirts. If you could pick up one of those, it'd be great. If not, then that's okay. We have name tags, but that'll just be next Sunday. And they're $22 each. I like on uh, first what marketplace, they have this thing. There's this lingo that I haven't totally figured out first come first serve but there's like all these little letters and there's the uh, yeah anyways first come first serve I can't think of the first letters of that so I'll just say the whole words if you know somebody who has a vintage vehicle or a maybe a brand new vehicle and they like to show it let them know that we have a car show let them know last year we had uh, 44 cars come out which was really quite amazing but we just need to get the, the word out there. There's a whole car culture and bike culture because we actually are, if you have a motorbike or if you've got a souped up lawnmower that you are loving and you want to bring, come and register it. And for everyone registering, they get a gift bag with some car stuff and uh, just for the first 50 of them. But we, we need more people to bring their vehicles out. So if you have someone, they even have a partially finished let them bring it out because the car community it's really actually quite awesome to see how people interact with each other and so Darren and I were at the front gate and I'm not I shouldn't be on the front gate so thank you girls for you girls that understand engine stuff and all that like God bless you I don't know how many of you really are out there because most girls are like oh that's so pretty like that color Oh, it, so register is like, what kind of vehicle? A red one. No. So apparently that's insulting to car people. So we do have some people with some knowledge at the door, at the gate, right? Ashley and Don will be there. And Darren came and Darren was like, oh, let me guess. Let, let me guess what it is. And the, it was just really like a little, it was like the psychology of the, the mind. And he'd say, that's a, and the driver would go, yes. And they bonded in that moment. It's like, you understand me. You recognize my car rather than, oh, it's so pretty. So that's just a little, a little tip. Anyways, so bring them out. If you know someone who's got a, a vehicle that they would like to come and register, it's just 20 bucks registration. And all the registration and all our concession proceeds go to the Perfect Gift Store. So we need people to bring cars, bikes. If you love it, if you got a boat, you got, oh, we've seen a nice boat with that large flake metallic paint. Beautiful. Whatever. Well, we'll celebrate you. Uh, and uh, the last thing is we want to do a baptism. We normally would do a baptism in um, August, but we want to do it in September. Who in here is would like to be baptized that you know you would like to be water baptized? 
Okay, so that's great. So we uh, <laughs> we will do a water baptism, yeah, by faith, or we will just have a picnic out at the day use area at Churchill. We pray for the green to move away and the fish flies to raise up, and it's like being baptized and yeah, in Lachlabish is just it's an experience. Some people go for the Jordan River in Israel, others go to Lachlabish, you know, day use beach. So anyways, we'd like to do that. It's going to be the first or second, we'll let you know, week. Uh, and if you're knowing someone who's wanting to get water baptized, we had a few people, they must be on holidays, who were interested in it. Now, as far as kids, we don't water baptize kids. Now, this is the reason why. is because we dedicate children. So there's an age where kids become accountable, and you kind of decide if you're going to follow Jesus or not. Little kids are awesome. And all of them want to follow Jesus, don't they? If mom and dad are leading the way, they're like, oh, yeah, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. But there's a time in their life when they come to the place of going, eh, I'm not really into this sort of thing. And so that's why we don't baptize. So when I say baptism, we're not talking about sprinkle. It's the full submersion and come on up. So just consider that. That's a conversation to have with your kids. And I think it's something kids could look forward to. I think it's parents that's, I don't think we need to give our kids everything when they think they need it. I think they can look forward to things. They can look forward to when they're old enough to go to kids' class or when they're old enough to go to youth group. I think it's a good thing, something to look forward to. Amen. So that's all I have for that. So no August live streams. We have the car show. Please come out. We're going to sell burgers and hot dogs and pops and then the baptism. Oh, yeah, coolers. Also looking, if you have a cooler that you could um, loan to us, just put your name on it. And We had a freezer last year in a trailer that we kept all the ice and did the stuff. This year, we're going old school. We're going coolers. So we might have a stack of coolers. But if you have a couple that we could borrow, we'd totally appreciate it. Just stick your name on a piece of tape, and we'll get it back to you. Amen. And our kids are gone again. They're so anxious. Sylvia was really excited to teach class today, too. She's like, I can't wait. The kids are going to be excited. So we'll just, uh, we don't hand around the offering bucket anymore, but what we do is we have, uh, nice, Rachel, she's so fast, Rachel, e-transfer. Okay, so the first one, go ahead back to the first one, and I was like, oh, that looks so pretty. I can't read a thing from my chair, but it's so pretty. So I always say, Rachel, can you please do an e-transfer? She's like, mom, I don't have time. Look at her. There it is. So we want, yeah, if you are uh, wanting to give, if you're a regular member and you're tithing, thank you. Most of us already know that, but we have a debit machine at the back. And right where Stephen is standing, there's a little black box on the wall. Yeah, and my husband is considered that it, that is a very anointed box. And you might want to hold on to something when you go to drop your offering in because there's so much power and anointing. Yeah. All fun aside, God is a good provider. Amen? He provides for you. He provides for me. He provides for this house that this church can do many, many things. This church is 30 years old. Who's been here for thir all 30 years? Okay, Dan. And Greg and Val. Wow. So that makes you how old? No. <laughs> 32. <laughs> you were two years old when you started. Yeah, so very few of us are able to be like, God bless you for being with the, a church for that long. I wish it was that way in all churches. It's very transient. So thank you for your faithfulness, for being here for the beginning and bringing people along. But for 30 years, God's been faithful and he will continue to be faithful in this. Amen. So I want to bless you. Are you, would you like to be blessed? You will. If you want a blessing, put a hand on your heart. And I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Lord, we thank you that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Lord, you are the one that provides for us. Lord, you are the one that gives us homes to live in. You are the one that's given us jobs, even if we haven't recognized that. You are the one who has sustained this church. You are the one who carries us through. You are the one who causes us to be peaceful in times of inflation. You are the one, Lord, that you give us even more because you see that we give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And Lord, I thank you for the tithers of this house. 
I thank you for the soon-to-be tithers. I thank you for our guests and visitors. And I speak, Father, your blessing right now, your blessing which cannot be contained. But I speak that as an explosion into the hearts of every heart. As we learned last week, Lord, it's about trust. And so, Father, I thank you for an increased measure of trust to trust you in the high times and in the low times. Lord, I thank you for blessing these who give. I thank you for blessing these who are soon to be givers. And Lord, that you continue to sustain this church, to be able to be a lighthouse in this community, to do great and wonderful things, and to give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys are still doing good. It's, it's okay. We can continue. Our, uh, our baptisms now, maybe this will sway some of you. We don't do the lake as much. Now we've started to do hot tubs. So a lot of the people, as we're putting them down, they're just saying, just leave me. Just leave, leave me there. I'm good. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord, just shake it up. Lord, just shake it up. My goodness. Don't come up here. Just shake it up, Lord, would you? Lord, sorry for the thing that we've made it. God, would you just shake, shake it up. And as you do, Lord, you return things to your design. And we think it's new and we love it, so Lord, do it. Just return, God. Return, Lord. A return, Lord, even as you cry out, return to me, and I'll return to you. God, thank you that the distractions and the idols, Lord, thank you for how good you are, but thank you for returning us back to you and your church, Lord. Shaking it up, shaking it up, shaking it up, Lord. So shake, Lord. And those things that can be shaken, Lord, you said they will be shaken. But the things that remain are foundational and that you have built will remain, God. And they'll become solid as you build on these things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to let Dawn step out in faith for a moment before we get going. Thank you, Lord. You guys, um, sometimes the Lord speaks to us, and we're, uh, it's difficult to express it because of, well, you might have fear or doubt or uh, and just lack of confidence or whatever it might be, but it's been on my heart for a long time to speak on this, and the Lord wants to encourage you to know how much he needs you to draw closer to him and come to know him more and more. He loves you so unbelievably much. And I, I have a vision of the Father and the Son walking in heaven. And they're looking down on earth. And the Lord's he's not all that happy with how it's going down there. He's, you know, before the days of Noah, he, he wiped them out because the world was full of sin. And I'm not sure what he said to Jesus about it. Maybe he was going to do another miracle on the planet and take it out again. I don't know that. But Lord, Jesus said, Father, send me. I love those people. They are worth saving. And I want to go, and I will go, and I will sacrifice myself for those people I love too. So I'm going to try a song. And that's another challenge. <laughs> but I, I hope you just take it into your heart. It's not from me. It's from the Holy Spirit that's leading this presentation. And it's all about God and not about me. It's about you guys. So he stood up in heaven and he looked down below, and he saw everything 
that laid a hand. He knew that a stable was where he'd be born, and in a manger he laid down his head. Still he came, still he came. Hallelujah, Jesus came. Though he knew every trial he would face, he could have said, my father, no, the price is great, I will not go. But because he loved us so, still he came. Now he knew he'd be tempted, and he knew he'd be tried. And he knew earthly men would mock his name. He knew about Calvary, he'd be nailed to a cross. But he knew his father's will, and so he came. Still he came, still he came. Hallelujah, Jesus came. Though he knew every trial he would face, he could have said, my father, no, the price is great, I will not go, but because he loved us so, still he came. Thank you, Lord. That was awesome. Thanks, Don. Maybe you didn't know, but we're doing tryouts for worship like right now. So, praise the Lord. Thank you. Now, Lord, fill him up. Fill him up where he's just poured out. Fill him up. Fill him up. Don has unwittingly stepped into this morning's message as well. You know, almost every, almost every time you go to speak or say anything, especially if you start to prepare, by the time you get close to doing it, you get attacked and filled with doubt. And so I don't know how many times, almost 100% of the time when I come here, um, I will just kind of rub shoulders with different people, especially go to the prayer room. And almost 100% of the time, it's confirmed through what someone does. And if it's not, then I sit in a moment and just be quiet and say, well, Lord, what do you want to speak then? And he's good like that. And so last night, God says this to me. And this kind of goes with, uh, there's two really good messages that were spoke last Sunday and the Sunday before on where, where remain, remain and come back, remain and come back. And he's dealing with their souls. He's dealing with your souls. And there's only so much time that you can try and put it into words. But tell you, a truth is people uh, on the inside are battling with our souls because there's some pretty amazing things that are happening on this earth right now, both kingdom of darkness and kingdom of light, although God's turning it all for good. But it's hard to watch. It's hard to deal with all the time. And it leaves people battling with your souls right now like we've never done before. And so Lord says this last night from Acts 14. Uh, 22, and Paul says this to, to the church. He says, he's strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue. Hold on, I'm going to do it again. Strengthening the souls. So that's, that's, that's where the battle and the twisting and the fighting and everything's going on because our souls want what our souls want, which is ease, and I want it right away, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. God is, in, is more than happy to bless his kids with good things. But that, oh, on the inside, things aren't, you just want to run. I want things to all work out. So he's strengthening the souls of his disciple, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying this, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. He's, he's saying this, there isn't a cakewalk and he's, here's Paul going, like, by the way, here's, here's, this is right after what happened. Paul goes to preach. They get around him. They don't like what he's saying. 
pick up a whole bunch of rocks, stone them to death. And then it's the, like the, the New Testament is so vague on this because I'm like, oh. And it's so vague. Here, it kind of goes like this. And then the disciples stood around him, and he came back to life and went back into the city and started to preach. I'm like, what? It's just, like, it's just so simple, you know. He goes back in, and he starts to preach, and he tells the rest of the disciples this. Dudes, through a lot of tribulation and pushing through, you take the kingdom of God. By the way, it is so worth it. Oh my goodness, is the kingdom worth it? Is his presence worth it? Is being with him worth it? You will be changed, but... And here's kind of the core of the message. There is some risk in the kingdom of God, amen? Let's say this together. Say risk. There is no such thing as the presence of God without some risk on the children of God's behalf. Amen? Now, Angie and I are taking off for uh, vacation for a little while. If, if I never was to return here, which we are, if I was never to return here, this is, this is the message that I would speak. So can you put up Joshua, please? Say this with me, please. Say risk. If, if you've got the courage to risk, you will find something happen It'll be like an automatic returning to the kingdom of God, the ways of God, the presence of God, the phenomenal power of God. Now, look at this. This is just going to show kind of an example. Um, this is Joshua, and he's, he's rescuing the Gibeonites. Uh, he's made a, a pact with them. And because he's made a pact with them, five other kings of all the other ites, the five ites, are coming, and they're going to whoop Gibeon. And so Joshua goes, let's, let's go, because there's going to be some payback. God's going to do something good. Let's rescue the Gibeonites. But those five ites have been after us for a long time. They've been a thorn, and God's saying, go and do battle with them. So they go, and Joshua's doing battle with them, and actually God's helping them, and he's raining down uh, hailstones, and he's actually killing more of the ites than the Israelites are doing. And it's phenomenal, and they're getting their payback, and they're setting their way up to go into the kingdom, but something is happening. They're running out of time. And so one of the most amazing things in the whole Bible is Joshua does this while they're battling because he knows this. We are running out of time to take vengeance on our enemies and clear a path for what God wants to do. And so he speaks to creation and he goes like this, sun stands still over Gibeon and moon over the valley of uh, Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge on their enemies. And there's not been a, no day like that before or after that the Lord heeded the voice of a man and fought for Israel. Oh! Now, here's, here's the point of this. Where did Joshua get the faith and the courage to do that? Because it was not prayed into him. There wasn't a place where elders or Mo went and slapped hands on him and said, now you've got the faith to do this. That never happened. Here's the message that I want to speak to you because I've heard it spoken to me. He got around it. That's it. He hung around the power. He stood, got around Moses. By the way, Moses was like a serious powerhouse. Go into the presence of God. Here's, here's how he did it. He got around. He stood around. He went after. It wasn't laid on. He did it by getting around the power. Amen? Mo's face would shine, and it freaked people out. And so Mo would have to cover up his face. Mo goes to the top of the mountain, and God says, I want to meet you on this mountain. Bring the people with, but tell them they got to be clean before they come up here. 
And so the people were so freaked out by the power of God that they go like this, no, you go, Mo. You go and talk to God. Too much power. Like that. Right? Joshua did this. Every time that Mo went into a tent to go meet with God, you know what Joshua did? No one told him nothing. Joshua did this. He sat outside the tent. He'd just wait and he'd just watch. Was Joshua scared? Come on. Risk. New Testament. God says this to all the believers, says this to them. Jesus saying this, now go, wait, tarry in Jerusalem, and you will receive power from on high. Now, we were, we were talking back in the prayer room that when, you know, and I, I said it a little bit this morning too, when we were young boys, we would go and put our hands on, on the electric fence or one of my friends, our car wouldn't start as distributor got wet and so I wasn't really full of smarts at the time and he said he said if you put your finger on the really top of the distributor I'll go to start it and the car will start like that I'm like okay well let's do whatever man let's do it so I put my hand right like that it started but I started too I'm I'm fine with putting my hand on 120, but 220. (laughs) What happened? Jesus says this. He says, guys, you go wait for me. You will be endued with power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. And the crowd thinned out. Someone said this, actually. The closer you get to the throne room, the thinner the crowd gets. But that crowd that steps into the throne room, because they will risk everything, will change the earth. If, if this was my last time to speak here, I would say this to you. Risk everything to get into his presence. And that means putting away your boundaries And that means putting away uh, your doctrines as well. Let God fulfill them. You don't. Is he love? Oh, come on. That love is also this. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Is that because he's mean? No. No. He's power and he is love. He changed your life. You get close to him, he will change your life. You will not be the same. So Joshua sees it all. He sees the ones who won't go up because there is too much power. Whoa, you go. I am not talking to God. No way. Same thing as the upper room. And then the tongues show up and there's power that shows up. And people start to speak in tongues, but there's joy. Because their lives are all of a sudden instantly changed. So he's all of those things. He's joy. He's power. He's love. He's restoration. All of those things. And there was fear outside. The people who heard God in their, in their language, because they're speaking in tongues, and people outside heard. And here's what happens, because here's how the church is, and this is what God wants to get past. And there's some that mock. Ah, they're full of new wine. Come on, s- silly. Why? Because they're scared. It's okay to be scared. I've been scared. I'm okay with a certain amount of voltage, but then after that, it kind of freaks me. Oh, God, what are you going to do? That's the only reason they mocked. They got to put it back into a place of control because they're scared. It's just just new wine. It's just that's all it is. No, it's the power of God, and everything has just changed. He loves you, he's pursuing you, and he's not going to let up. He's going to have his way. That's what I say, God, come. But he's got to disrupt things. He's got to go, church, I love you, but you got an order, and you're trying to get me to fit into your order. Can't do it. Going to change some things. Let me come. Remember, um, 
Uh, whose funeral was that that we did at, at EPRI and things were getting out of control? Pearl. Pearl Elliott. Pearl was awesome. And uh, um, Pearl's hubby. Tom, thank you. Tom's, Tom's up at the, at the front and he's wearing his kilt. <laughs> that was awesome. And Pearl loved playing uh, Days of Elijah. Days of Elijah. And so she'd, she'd crank that thing up, and, and the, they finally took away her license because when she'd be driving, she'd take her hands off the wheel and just start praising God. <laughs> so they, 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 they actually, she wouldn't stop driving. They had to pull her battery out of the car because she's still going, man, to praise God. Oh, yeah. But she had guts. She would just go tell anyone about Jesus, truckers included, don't matter. She'd walk right up to them and tell people to stop smoking. It's not good for you, that kind of thing. And she'd tell about Jesus. And everyone goes, that woman's loony. And I go, whoa, did that woman have faith. Risk. So we're doing the funeral, and we start playing Days of Elijah. And as we're playing, people are singing, Tom, Tom's in his kilt. He's got his arms up, and the presence of God shows up. And when, when God shows up, so does liberty. So does freedom. But so does the opportunity for your soul to get in fear. All of those things are present in a church. No matter if it's a building or not, you have everything. You have the opportunity to grasp onto God, and you have your own soul going through fear. So the music starts going, and all of a sudden, we are days of Elijah, and the power starts to come. And all of a sudden, you know, Tom's, Tom's dancing like this, and the guy who's in the booth back there is going, these guys are singing too loud, can't hear the music. So he's trying to crank up the music as the people get louder. But the more they cranked up the music, the louder the people got. I'm supposed to be doing the funeral, and I'm thinking to myself, what the heck is going on? This is a funeral? And then all of a sudden that reviving presence is starting to come and I'm going, what am I supposed to do here? This is crazy. And I'm, ah, whatever, just do it. Just do it. I remember, because I, I was walking back because I kept telling the guy, turn it up. And, and I could hear some people over here. They weren't saved, but they went like this. They were sitting going, this is a funeral? Like that. They were both appalled. Like, what's going on? All of, let's have some order. That happens. But if you have your way in that side, you will quench the presence of God. Only men, women who are afraid, and they want to bring control in so that they don't know, because they don't, we don't know what to do, will quench the presence of God by trying to bring in order. He is control. There's no safer place in all of creation than when God is near. Devils leave. Amen. I would tell you, risk everything. That's what I would tell you, risk. That's what I'm telling you, I guess. Risk. Especially in this season, risk. We might die. You are going to die anyways but the second death will not harm you. Man, I know some people that are dead that lived. Praise the Lord. Your dad was one. That boy lived. It was addictive just being around him. Yeah. You're going to have to risk. Amen? Um. 2 Corinthians 4, please. So God took that presence that was on Moses because it was awesome, and it's him. And he said, you can't do this by yourself. So he took that presence, and he put it on 70 of the, other, 70 of the others as well so that they could do it too. That's, I'm just saying this. That's not what the scripture is about. I'm saying this. That's that presence of God, that God was like, let's multiply this. Those people are unique, but what's on you, let's put it on them. We, gotta, we got things to do. It's going to be awesome, so go do it. He did. Joshua was around watching all of that. But even in that, you had the people that wouldn't go up the mountain. And even in that, you had people that did this to Moses as well. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Think you're holy or something? Don't we have the presence of God too? Don't we serve too? 
Who made you prince over us? And that's Israel. Risk. You're going to have some people who are afraid, don't want to go with you. You might have some people who are like this. Who do you think you are going after God? Who do you think you are doing this Holy Ghost stuff? Risk. It is so worth it. For if you gain Christ, you gain everything. I have, I have, I have never risked. And, and do people talk about me? Come on. Of course. I have, I have never went afterwards even being berated by people and went, oh, that wasn't worth it. Gee, I, I shouldn't have went after the Holy Ghost there and, and seen those people transformed. Through many tribulations, you need to take the kingdom of God. Amen? It's a good risk. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's what they did. People speaking in tongues, power of God, and the ones who were afraid went like this. Uh, it's new wine. They're drinking. That's, they're all drunk. And so Pete comes out, dudes, it's 9 in the morning. Who gets drunk at 9? This is actually the promise. And he's so filled with the Holy Ghost, he starts speaking out of Joel. And he said, this promise that we're doing right here, and he goes, it's for you too. And for your kids. And for all those who are far off. And people are like, oh, what do we do? Men and brethren, let me tell you what you should do. <laughs> Repent and come to the Lord. And you too will experience times of refreshing by the presence of the Lord. They got freaked out, filled with the Holy Ghost. They changed everything. My goodness. Put your hands on the 220. Even Jesus was limited. What I want to do, it's more than beneficial that I go away. Because if I don't go away and I'm limited by this body, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost will not come. You will not get baptized with power and fulfill what I want on this earth. I got to go. No, don't go like that. They all freaked out and didn't want to go. And Pete rebukes them. He says, no, you shall not go. This shall not happen to you. What does Jesus call Pete? Get away from me, Satan. And Pete's like, what'd you do? What? Come on. No, that's fear, dude. That's fear. That your fear will stop what I want to do. Let me go. I'll be with you. I'm going to make you a pillar, ground of the church. Man, your shadow will raise people. You'll be the only one, actually, that you will speak and call on another person's death in the New Testament. Wow. The Bible says this, that many were afraid to even join them, but revered them. And this is what God did. He multiplied the church daily, those that were being saved. Risk. And here's what he's saying. Here's, here's Paul trying to teach the Corinthian church, actually. He's teaching about the Holy Ghost. And in fact, in I think it's 317, um, he says one of the most beautiful scriptures that I love. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And then he keeps teaching them on the Holy Ghost, and he says this. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I did something. I spoke, I risked. We also believe, and therefore we speak. So Paul's saying this, all the great stuff that you see have, Jesus, us, the apostles, you got the same. You have the same spirit of faith. Jesus had it without measure, yes, but you got the same. Romans says this, we've all been given the measure of faith. And the only thing that stops me from stepping out and trying to see is fear. Amen? I, I hate fear. You know, do you know why I hate fear? For me, it stops me. I hate that. Because you, you can have, it's like the prize. The prize is right there. And, and, and sometimes there's like there's this there's this river that's flowing in this place, and I, and other churches would be the same. So I can be back here, and there'll be an altar call for something like this. 
purity. I just feel that there's like a, uh, there's a river that's flowing here, and God is just wanting to purify his people. By the way, this is a truth of what's happening right now. I'm not speaking something that God is not doing. He's doing it now. There's purity, but for me to go up there, that means this. Man, if I step up there, people are going to think or see that I'm not pure, that I've been in stuff, and then I'm going to do I can't do it. Fear. I hate that. So when, when, when we're off, she's always getting on me because uh, if there's a waterfall, I go and I walk to the end of it. If there's a cliff, there's a cliff, I'll go to the end of the cliff. And she's going, come back. Gabe, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Because I'm afraid. I hate that. I hate it. <laughs> Last tropical place we went to, um, there were sharks in the water. And so I went, I'm going in. I'm, I went back, got my swimming stuff. And we went into the water. Why would you? Because I'm afraid. A fear has stopped me for too long. And I'm not going to let it master me. If I die, I die. But let me die by risking something in my life. Amen? False evidence appearing real, whatever. Say whatever you want. Here's the antidote. Risk. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you forever. You got all my word. Here's my spirit. I gave you lots of promises. I bless you. I'm always with you. You know that. And then the moment that fear hits, it's like debilitating. Step out. I'm speaking to me now. I, I went out Saturday just because I was... I was trying to do stuff with my car and bike, and I was just, I'm bothered on the inside. I'm just bothered. And so I just go, I got to go do something. I got to get out and find someone. There is someone in this town that needs kindness of God. I'm going to go, and I'm going to find those people. So I did. Went out and found those people. And it wasn't like, glory. <laughs> oh. You know, the Mary Poppins theme comes along, and all of a sudden, there I am floating. The hills are alive. But what it was was this. It felt like this. It felt like whatever demonic thing just got nailed. And, and all of a sudden, you're stepping higher. And, and my only fear was actually this, some form of rejection, which is fear of man, which Proverbs says, that's a snare. I'm stuck. Can't go any further. I would tell you, if I wasn't able to come back to this church, I would say this. Risk. Risk. Huh? I asked them this. Uh, I just found some people, and I, I just... You know you what? You don't, you don't have to go like this. I have a word from the Lord. I have a word from the Lord for ye. Like that. They're going to be like, yeah, sure. Security. I just asked them. I just come up and I just said to them, ladies, has anyone done anything kind for you today? And they're like, oh. well, they didn't know what to say, so I just asked them, would you let me be kind to you? Uh, yeah. So I was kind to them. And then I was able to say this, Jesus really loves you. And they moved along and left them like that. Some sow, some water. God brings the increase. And you just, you just do what you feel that God's asking you to do in that moment. Maybe next time I'll be the one who I get to lead them to the Lord. We used to always think we've got to go for the kill. They must accept Jesus in this moment. Do what God's asked you to do. Sometimes just being kind. The prayer team went out on Tuesday and they went to the, um, where all the carnival workers were. They brought them a whole bunch of drinks and just blessed them and I think prayed for one. Just do something, but risk. That's, uh, Craig Broker used to say that a lot. The currency in the kingdom of heaven is risk. Amen? Amen. Where are we?
same spirit of faith. Yeah. Amen. Okay, listen. This is what risk means with my glasses on. Risk is the possibility of loss or injury. Didn't say that it is. Didn't say that you're going to get injured or you're going to lose. It says the possibility of loss or injury. Maybe that's for flesh, but it's definitely for self-preservation. Risk also means this. The chance, didn't say that it's going to happen, the chance of loss or peril. Risk also means this, the chance to lose value. It does, doesn't it? It's just, it's just the false thing. It didn't say it's going to happen, but it presents itself like this could happen. I always find this, that the word of God rises up at the exact same time and goes like this. Yeah, but if you follow me, watch what will happen. For I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a soundness of mind. That's what I've given you. But you're going to have to risk to take that. Uh, I was just sharing really briefly when Angie and I got well, saved in, in the back prayer room. Yeah, just, today. just today. Just today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when, when, when God was showing himself real to me, which is what I needed, I needed the extreme. It was like me being electrocuted with 220. So, and I was telling people that I used to describe it like this. Um, when, like I've, I've been electrocuted three times just by 120. No big. When, when God got me, when, when the Holy Spirit showed up and I was in that place where he was, the power of God hit me so hard that it hurt without being hurt. And that's the best way that I can describe that. It was intense, unlike anything I've ever felt before, but I wasn't hurt. And my flesh rose up in that moment. And there's people up here. They're in the presence of God. There was somebody up on the guitar, and they were playing that. And there's people who are like, there's peace everywhere. And the presence of God is everywhere. But when God shows up in me, the first thing that rose up was the demonic in my flesh. And so this power is going through me, and I'm holding the, the chair in the front, and, I'm going, and this is what's happening in, in, in me as the demonic is rising up. It's going like this. There's an electrical current in this air. Someone has done something to your seat, and you're getting electrocuted right now because they did that. And then I was going, oh, that's stupid. I, I'm not even on the seat. And then it went like this. There is mass hypnosis in this room right now, and I'm looking around. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's it. And this thing was trying, and after three times, it went like this. It went, oh, I give up. Because the power of God was so strong in that room that even the demonic could not even, I, I give up. And so what was left after the flesh and the soul got out of the way, the only thing that was left was my spirit that God gave me and brought to life. And my spirit goes, this is Jesus and you've been waiting your whole life for this. Start to ball. I've been waiting my whole life for Jesus. And when he came, the, sure, I could have been stopped. Could have, I, was look, I was looking for where the exit was because I was so freaked out. But I've been through so much death in my life, so much garbage, and I was going to die that I was like, just do it. We don't know nothing about church. And the lady up at the front who was going like this, whoo, I'm going to call you all up front if you want to come up. And I was still thinking, you're a loon. <laughs> However, there is a whole bunch of God here. And I knew I'm a dirt bag. And yet, he's all over me. There's something that happens. I mean, you can preach and go, it's validation. Yeah. When you're in that moment and you know you're a dirt bag and yet God's all over you? Oh, I'm going to the front. So for three days after that, we couldn't feel uh, hot or cold. Just perfect temperature. I stayed away from my parents because when I talked, this is what wanted to come out of my mouth. Praise the Lord. And I'm thinking, I can't say that to anyone. I will freak out everyone I know. There's got to be some risk 
in your life. We may get hurt. Yeah, you may. Or you may just be transformed and turned around by his promises. Amen. For when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall be like a different person. That old man shall die, but behold, what is, what is born and what comes forth is the new man. What about my stuff? As far as the east is from the west, he has turfed all your sin. He remembers it no more. Whom the Son has set free is indeed free. Would you like to find out? It means risk. Amen. My, you can trust him. Last two years, this is what we've been hearing. Let's be safe. Trust the science. I want to say something that actually another politician, a very wise politician who fears the Lord said this. They said, you don't trust science, you prove science. There is, there is nothing, you will never be as safe anywhere as you are when you're in God's plan. How, how can you get any more safe than being in God's plan? How? But I, I will tell you all this, and I tell myself this. If you think God is safe, when it comes to your bubble and our personal protection... If, if you think God is safe, you are in for a surprise and a wild ride because God is not safe. He will not be canned. He will not be put into your little box, my little box that I put him in. He is exceedingly dangerous to the kingdom of God. And let it be forewarned that if you step into his presence, you will be messed up and never the same again. You will get a hunger and you will get a fire. You may walk around going, praise the Lord. People will see you and know that there's something different. What is the reason for the hope inside you? Why are you like this? And you will have to tell them. If you get close to him, you will be changed. In fact, I'll say it like this. You will probably be who God has intended you to be. Is it scary? For your flesh, yes. And there's a process that in the proper timing, God will bring you out and reveal you. Don't you want to know? I did. Spent too long. I was the captain of my dork squad. What a bunch of idiots we were. The dumb things we did. Oh my goodness. Some of them are actually really cool to talk about because you did that? Yeah, we did that. What a bunch of twits. But here was the problem. I wasn't the follower. I was the leader of, of all of us twits. And I thought, this is it? I'm, I'm the leader of a bunch of idiots, and this is like, this is as good as it gets? Is this it? Is this what I'm meant for? And so the Lord shows up, and he goes, do you want to know what you've really been met for, what, what I've built you for? And I, I've said this many times. I've, I've, we're trying to find out. So we, we, act, we, we would get dressed up, and we would lay before our television on Sundays, and we'd watch It Is Written. I think it was a Mormon thing, wasn't it? Seven day menace, whatever it was. I don't care. We just we need to know. We just got electrocuted by God. We can't go back. What are we supposed to do? We don't know how to go to church. We don't even know what church to go to. So we'd sit in front of the TV, we'd dress up and just praise the Lord and we'd watch TV. And then after a while it's like this hunger on the inside. Don't you want to know? It's gonna involve risk. It's like, oh, okay, what are we supposed to do? So we would ask pastors or someone to come over. And we found out it's not enough. It's not enough. So we started to go to church, and we would walk into the church, and the people could care less that we were there. I did there, yeah. Got in, and people blow us off. Yeah, it's like, 
we walk in, I, I, I just want to know Jesus. They shake your hand, yeah, go sit over there, whatever. Some of, some of them didn't even tell us where to sit, just go, whatever, like that. And I, I, I said this to the Lord uh, on the way out, and I think it was the third time that we went to a church. I said, I am done. If this is what a Christian is, you can keep it because I can fake it better than that. I'm done with you. And then he got a hold of us. You got a risk. Some of you are ticked. God's not come through. I get that. Why don't you go wrestle with them? Jacob did. If you want your blessing, some of you are going to have to wrestle with him. Amen? Risk. What if, what if, what if? Yeah, but what if? <laughs> Holy moly, what if? The things I have seen in the kingdom. Wow. Don't you want to know? We go to the hospital. It was our, it was our foundation course. So we, we would go to the foundation class, and I don't know how many of us there were, say 12, 14. So they're teaching us the foundations of God. And then on the last day, they said, okay, now after this, there's got to be an outworking of your faith. Amen? And in fact, before I even go into that story, how many of you like the book of James? You are weird people. <laughs> wow, James is like abusive. God, I beat you up. <laughs> you know, if I had a person in front, of, I'll do it to myself. It's like G James grabs you like this and goes, but you smart enough, you've got to do something with your faith. You can't just sit there, man. What are you doing? That's James. Smack, smack, smack like this. Get up, boy. James is like, there's, there has to be an outworking of your faith. Because if there's not, your faith is dead. See, James busts you because even when we'd be high on ourselves and go, I got so much faith. I got, I got faith like this. And he goes, you got nothing. You show me your faith, and I'll show you my faith with works. And when, you, when your faith has an outworking, there is power, there is growth, people get blessed, you grow, you find out what's on the inside. And James is smacking you going, you got to do this. So we're in our, our foundation course, and, and there's like we get to the very end, and the pastor says, okay, now for the next Tuesday or whatever it was, We'll all be going to the hospital, and we'll be going into different rooms, and we'll be praying for people. And we're like, oh, okay, good. I didn't want to go. She didn't want to go. I don't, I don't want to go, but this is, this is it. And so leading up to it, all we're thinking of, I don't know about her, but all I'm thinking about is every possible thing that could go wrong. That's all you're doing, and you're rehearsing them and magnifying them. Okay, it's okay. Maybe we'll, we'll go. It'll be awesome. Besides that, there's 12 of us. We're, we'll do it. So we show up on the Tuesday. There's no, 12 didn't show up. It's just me and her. Everyone else bailed. That's it. Just us two and the pastor and you're, everything's in slow motion as your heart's beating too. No. And your head's trying to think of reasons why I can't go. I'm sick. I'm having a stroke. I can't go. Oh. So we went in. Pastor brought his guitar. Oh, we just stood there in horror. It was terrible, except what was happening between that pastor and that patient. So here we are in horror, and what's happening there is power. And we've seen it. And then we went home, and after you've seen it, you can't not do it. I was hoping that it would have been just a terrible time so that we wouldn't have to go again except he was there and his power was there and he was touching them and they were crying and they were getting healed. Ah, we got to go again. So we went and we found out that there is power and when you risk, you see everything. And we did it for two, two years and we have a journal of miracles and power and not just power, but we trained up a whole bunch of people that would go and we would take on every floor and we would come back. And then it got so big and so powerful that we would leave people at the bottom and they would be interceding for those. And I was one of them because I got pride filled. I was just like, 
we, we saw so many miracles, so much, so much. I'm like, I'm going like this, and I'm about to walk, and the Holy Ghost goes, you ain't going anywhere. You're going to stay down there and pray for them. And I'm like, oh, but I'm the leader. I'm the guy. And the Lord's like, not today you're not the guy. You are down there praying for them. They will go. So I'm down there praying for them. I'm seeing what they're doing in prayer. So they come down, and, and I go, how to go? Just wait. Tell me if I'm true. And I speak everything. They're like, everything. Everything. Everything you just prayed happened. Yes. Risk. Lady comes packed full of demons, chanting and puffing, and she must have weighed all of 90 pounds. She was in the hospital because she was full of demons. And, and so w I had two big guys with us, and they tried to hold her wrists. She came down to the chapel where you were. They tried to hold down her wrists. She could lift them up. No problem. No problem. I mean, some of these guys were like 280. No problem. You, you do not match strength with a devil and pathetic but spiritual strength whoa risk if I never got to come here again I would tell you would you risk when his presence is there say shut up flesh I'm going in I'm getting God Don good job Let's be safe. Trust the science. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I get, I'm not, I'm not talking about a virus or an antidote. Yeah. I'm talking about a statement yeah. that goes out long enough. Yeah. We, we, we were, um, is it, what are those things you watch? They're like one minute, you laugh at them. Instagram. Yeah, I'm not a fake booker or whatever. Instagram that kind of thing, and, and there's one on there where there's just this noise that goes out. It's just a noise, it's just this one noise, and there's four different choices of what, the, what this noise can be. They're different words, two words put together, and whatever, this is really interesting, whatever you looked at, the noise sounded like those words. So you've got four choices of, of, of different words. They looked like they were here. Here's two words put together, here's two, here's two, here's two. And this noise comes out, and whatever you look at of those words is exactly what that noise sounded like. It was the weirdest thing. Could, I don't even remember the words were, like a red needle. And if you looked at, at you heard the voice went on, it went, red needle. If you looked over here at the green one that said green needle, you heard the voice again, it sounded like green needle. Wherever you were looking and you were hearing it, that's what it was. You hear, let's be safe, trust the science long enough, and you end up getting pacified. And then you come into church, and somebody says this, man, the presence of God is flowing here. Holy moly. And what have you been looking at the most? Risk. Risk. Risk when you're in here. Get filled up when you're in here. Risk when you're out there. People need to hear Jesus the Christ in you. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, let's give me a scripture. Well, actually, we're going to do that. You've been interceding. Give me the first one. Look at this. If you trust, we're going to do some word here, okay? If you hear it long enough, if you hear it long enough, say this with me. Say, trust, trust in, the Lord. in the Lord. All I'm going to do is give you some word. It's probably going to be a lot, and I'm telling you this before we even try to get through them. I stopped. I had to stop. It's too much. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered, which means this. Trust God. Do another one. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, the Lord is my strength and song. He's also become my salvation. Give me another one. Psalm 25. Oh my God, I trust 
in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let's do it again. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. Let's do another one. Jeremiah 17. For he, oh, same one. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will you cease from yielding fruit. Praise God. Let's do another one. The Lord is my strength, my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Let's do another. And we know that all things, I love this, work together for good for those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purposes, which is trust. Give me another. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Grant us another one. 1 John 5, 14. Now, this is the confidence or trust. That's what it means that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Another one. Isaiah 26. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. Give me another. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust you, even at the end of a cliff even if jumping in with sharks, even if it looks like the sharks are out there at your place of work. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust you. Give me another one. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. Give me another. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. My goodness. Another one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. Is that the last one? Okay. Okay. Now listen to this. This is just as a result of what you, of what we just read. This is what happens when you trust. I'll sum it up. You'll be delivered. You will not be afraid. Your enemies won't triumph over you. You won't be anxious when trouble comes. You won't stop being fruitful. You will be helped. Your heart will rejoice. Everything will work out for you in due season. He will hear you. He will be your strength. He'll be merciful to you. You won't fear man, and he will direct all of your paths. Hear hear his word, hear his word, hear his word. You can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. Ah, okay. Last thing we end with is what we started with. Paul says this in the book of Acts that he said last night to me. Paul went around strengthening the souls of his disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God because it's accessed by risk. Amen. Chris, are you here? I hope we're coming back. Sheesh. Well, they ate the crackers, and they're okay, so we should be okay. (laughs) We're still watching, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) But you don't know. I'm not promised tomorrow. I still got a lot of things I want to do. I still have a vision of, of where I'm yet to speak and how many people will be there and kind of what it'll look like. I still have to do that one. And until then, I don't know. But I was starting to think I might have done that one a little while ago. You're not promised nothing. So while you're here, why not live? And if you say to me, already I'm doing that, okay, like a kid would say, pants on fire. Come on. There's always more. We've not yet attained to the fullness of God. 
You don't have to do it because someone told you. Do it because he told you. You can trust. Can you stand, please? Well, Lord, I do hope that we come back. But God, you're doing some pretty cool, great things even right now. And Lord, with or without one person here, you're going to continue to set people free. You can stir yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in a language that the Lord gave you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus told them, He said, Wait for the promise to come to you, which is from on high. You will be endued with power, which is so cool. And He said, You would be my witnesses in Jerusalem, to the ends of the earth, all over these places. Christ in you, Colossians says, the hope of glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here's what I want to offer to you today is not me and not my experiences, but I want to offer to you today you and Jesus and what you look like. So the offer is this today, that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you say this, well, I am already filled with the Holy Spirit, then I would say, there's more. There, there's, there's a whole bunch more. And he is so willing. And what that looks like is between you and him. But he says this, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. He said, don't be filled with wine, which is dissipation. And he wasn't going like this, you don't drink wine. He was saying this, you can come to a place where you fill yourself up with the ways of the world so that you pacify the spirit, so that you don't have to step out and find out what your life is really like. It's a poor substitute. But be filled, be filled, be filled with the spirit. Be filled with his presence. Be filled, be filled. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I'm inviting you up front to come to risk a little and if you would like to be filled today with the Holy Spirit from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus, who said, tarry and wait for this promise, then please come up to the front, and we are going to pray together. No one's standing out.